I've been flirting with retinoids for a couple of years now, but I've never really stuck to using one product daily and over a period of time. Looking for the best product can be really confusing. Do you go for plain old over-the-counter retinol or do you opt for the powerful prescription strength retinoic acid? Well, I've gone for something in between. It's called retinaldehyde, otherwise known as retinal. It's sold by Medic8 and in this video I'm going to explain the difference between the three retinoid groups and why I've opted for what I hope is a happy medium. So Medicaid described their crystal retinol as a form of vitamin A that's even more powerful than retinol, closer in power to retinoic acid, which some of you will know as tretinoin, but without the side effects of tretinoin. They claim their retinal acts up to 11 times faster than retinol at providing anti-aging, radiance boosting and clarifying benefits to the skin. They also claim that retinal is the only directly antibacterial form of vitamin A able to target the bacteria which causes blemishes to promote a clearer, decongested complexion. So it comes in different strengths, starting with Crystal Retinal 1, which would be an entry level 0.01% uh, retinaldehyde. And then it builds up to 3, then 6, 10, and then you can go up to 20, which is a 2% retinaldehyde. And that one, 20, is only available in clinics. Looking at the Medicaid website, I could see there are lots of beauty clinics across the UK that stock it, that's number 20, but you need to check the website to see if it's available in your country. For the lower strengths um, that you can buy online, in the US, Crystal Retinal starts at $49 for strength one, and it climbs to $100 for strength 10. In the UK, prices start for £39 from strength one, and stretch to £79 for strength 10. Now, presumably, strength 20 is even more expensive. Because I've used retinol before and had been using it frequently in the run-up to trying retinal, I started on strength 6, which costs £59 for 30 milliliters. Now, I think that is quite excessive. And that's when I think about moving up to the next level 10, I'm already asking myself, do I want to pay £79 for something that will probably last me a couple of months? So over the year, I could be spending somewhere between £400 and £500 on retinol alone. And when you look at it like that, it's like, wow. So I'm not thrilled about the price of this line. I bought my Crystal Retinal 6 on Amazon, and I will include product links in the uh, description below if you want to take a look. What I will say, despite my reservations about the price, is that the Crystal Retinal 6 is making a big difference to my skin. In fact, potentially the biggest difference of any product that I've tried. So every evening I use a one pea sized pump of the retinal and then I spread it over my face and a little over my neck. And I'm starting by sweeping some over my forehead and then working with my way around from there, including smoothing some over my upper eyelids. Now, despite it being a hybrid between retinol and the very powerful retinoic acid, I've had no sensitivity problems with it at all. And it's a strange sort of orangey color and it is lightly scented. But the only thing that I notice is a slight sort of tingling uh, just after using it and sometimes a little bit of, of tingly itchiness the next day, particularly on my forehead. But that was something that I would also get with retinol as well. Uh, so nothing new from that perspective. As for the results, after a month of continuous daily use, well, let's take a look at the before and after shots. So my skin, looks and feels completely smooth. I have zero lumps and bumps and um, the fine lines around my eyes, I think are diminishing. Uh, my skin looks in much better condition. I think that it is noticeably clearer and brighter. I have no doubt about that. But in my dream scenario, 
I would get a little lift around the eyes from retextured, tighter skin and um, the collagen boost that retinol is supposed to offer. There is no sign of a lift yet. Um, although I, I think that the, the, the skin on my upper eyelids does look smoother and is less creppy, but it's not noticeably tighter. This is peak allergy season in spring in the UK though, and my eyes become dry, they become puffy. So although they are better this year, um, that I attribute to my new skincare routine, including this Medicaid um, cream, but I also attribute that to using an infrared lamp. And um, I did a, a video about my infrared use, which I'm gonna link to here as well for you to have a look at. But basically now is not a good time for me to be analyzing the hooding around my eyes because they're just that little bit swollen. In my last video, I talked about how I've been using Paula's Choice glycolic acid every morning to tackle discoloration. And I'm still doing that daily without causing any issues by adding in the retinal. So I use the glycolic acid in the morning and then the retinal at night. And in the day, crucially, I'm wearing my Paula's Choice Factor 50 moisturizer because both glycolic acid and retinoids, all retinoids, will make your skin more sensitive to the sun. So the question for me now is, do I want to move up the retinal ladder and splash out 79 pounds for the Strength 10 cream? Do I stay where I am at the moment on Strength 6? Or do I try tretinoin or retinoic acid? And that's the most powerful retinoid. And it would actually be cheaper than Medicaid looking at the options available in the UK. So what's the difference between retinol, retinal and retinoic acid? Well, they're all retinoids derived from vitamin A, but they work differently. So each of them will speed up the life cycle of skin cells, making them divide faster and die faster so that newer, healthier cells can take their place. All retinoids promote rapid exfoliation and stimulation of collagen and elastin production, which leads to smoother looking skin. But they're not quite the same. Retinol is a natural form of vitamin A. So it's milder and less irritating to sensitive skin and it's available without a prescription. Tretinoin or retinoic acid is a synthetic version of vitamin A. It's stronger than retinol and it is only available with a prescription and it's not as well tolerated by sensitive skin. Retinaldehyde or retinal is right in the middle and that's because in order to have an effect on the skin, vitamin A must first be converted to reach its biologically active form which is called retinoic acid. So when you apply retinoic acid, it's already in that biologically active form and it will get to work straight away. So it's gonna act more quickly, but then it can cause greater irritation and you've gotta kind of got to build up over time and be really careful with tretinoin. Retinol is two conversion steps away from retinoic acid. Whereas the retinal, retinaldehyde, is just one conversion step to retinoic acid. And the fewer conversions required, the more benefits are supposedly delivered to the skin. So that's why, because I didn't quite feel ready to go down the prescription strength route, I went for something in the middle, um, in between retinol and tretinoin, and that's this retinaldehyde. Um, in the past, I've used the Ordinary's 2% retinol, which I did find to be quite irritating on the skin, so I didn't tend to use it daily. It does have its fans, though, who say it's very effective with regular use. The Medicaid Retinal is certainly effective, but it's also non-irritating. So I'm gonna keep with this for the time being, and I think, for the purposes of review, I'm going to step up and try the Strength 10 and I'm going to report back on how I get on. So I can see if by upping to Strength 10 and continuing to use over time, what kind of results I get. For now, um, I'm going to put the idea of stepping up to Tretinoin on hold. I do like um, the thought of using a more natural over-the-counter option if I can. 
Um, but I must say, from what I see from other YouTubers who've shared their Tretinoin experiences and some of the viewers on this channel who absolutely swear by it, some have had really noticeable results, um, particularly with skin around their eyes uh, that appears to be sort of visibly lifted. So if that's you, if you've had a result like that from using Tretinoin, do let me know. I would love to hear about your experience and even see uh, your before and afters if you have such a thing. Um, I think if I get to the end of this year and I feel that this retinal hasn't really made a difference to the sagging around my eyes, then I'll probably give retinoic acid a whirl. So I hope that if you've also been looking at the options around retinoids, that this information has been helpful. I know that a lot of you will already have done your own research and will have found products that will work for you. So do let me know what you use and whether you think you're getting good results from it. I do love to hear about your experiences. If you haven't already subscribed, then by doing so now, you'll be notified as soon as my next video is published. And by liking this video, you'll be helping to support this channel. So a big thanks to those of you who give it a thumbs up. For now, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.